Here's how to create a snow scene in Blender. Shoot your footage. Now we're gonna need some footage. I'm just using a clip that I found on Pexels because I'm lazy. Thank you to this guy. But here's some things to consider if you are going to be shooting your own footage. Don't be too lit. The number one thing that's gonna hinder this shot is your lighting. An overcast day will work best, but you can get away with direct sunlight if you blend the snow assets more. Snow ability. It's a word I'm, I'm coining. Basically, what things in the scene will make it hard for you to lay down snow? on the ground. For example, do you have a lot of moving objects such as trees or plants that will break the illusion? These are the things to keep in mind. Record your life. Now we can't get away with the fix it and post mentality here, so we actually wanna make sure that we're recording our camera's details. Things like the shutter speed, aperture, focal length, focal distance from the object to the camera is all really important for helping you get a realistic look. Scene set up and tracking. Next, we need a motion track. If your shot is a still shot, we can get away with using a program such as FSpy, or you could do my personal favorite method of just trying to line up the camera as best as you can based on the measurements that you've probably taken before. As mentioned before, the GOAT of VFX tutorials, Ian Hubert, has given us this gift of how to motion track in Blender, and this is what we're gonna be following, so here's a quick recap. First, go into the motion tracking tab and select Prefetch and Set Scene Frames. Next, click the Tech Features and Adders and Points. We're gonna brute force this. Go to the first frame and track forwards, then go to the last frame to Tech Features, press A and track backwards. Then go to the middle, detect features, press A, track forward and track backwards. A lot of tracking. We can then go into the solve tab and start to clean up our data. Keep going until you have a value below one. Click set up tracking scene. You can either select three points on the ground and click floor to roughly align the video or move the camera manually to try and match the original position. The last and probably most time consuming part of this is creating a rough model of your scene. I had to extrude walls and try and create some rough high spots in the ground to match the scene as best as I could. Model snow. All the resources you need to make this effect can be found online for free. Woohoo! Freedom! Number one, a snow texture material. Number two, an overcast HD array. And number three, a displacement map. But we're gonna create our own displacement map because we're original. You'll need a photo editing software such as Photoshop or Affinity if you don't like Adobe like I hate it but I have to use it. Start by just opening a new project and basically just getting at it using the brushes. Since this is a street, I wanted to make sure that the edges kind of had more snow and the middle was kind of missing some snow. Now that we have a rough image, we need to make it repeatable. Duplicate the layer as a backup and then press Ctrl E to collapse the layer. Go to the select tool and select the bottom half of the layer. Right click and press layer via cut we can then move the bottom layer up and use a layer mask to blend between the two layers. Then we can use the cropping tool to crop our new texture. Basically, we've taken one edge and put it at the top and then merged it together. This will make sure the material has no seams in Blender. Next, we can create a water or a shadow layer. Save the file and duplicate the current layer or group and press Ctrl E to merge the layers together. We can then go to filter, maximum, and then go back to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Now it's important that we export this displacement map as a TIFF or an EXR file, not a PNG, as much as I love PNGs. Don't get me wrong, I love PNGs. That's because we're gonna need all this detail to create the height in our displacement map. For the snow material, first add in an image texture and then load up our displacement map. With the object selected in the viewport, go into the edit mode. In our first viewport, we can go back into the UV editor window and view our displacement map and we can move the position of our points to better match the pavement. Since our texture is looping, we can also extend past the edge of our displacement map. Next, we can add in a mixed shader node and a transparent material. Mixing between both with our displacement map, also add in an invert node if need be. On our first material, press Ctrl Shift T to import our downloaded snow material. This will set up the texture for us. Now for some depth. First, add in a displacement node. Plug in our displacement map to the height, change the mid-level to zero and adjust the scale. Make sure to go into the settings of your material and change the displacement to bump plus displacement. Second, add in a subdivision modifier to the plane. If you don't see the adaptive subdivision checkbox, this is because you don't have Cycle's experimental setting enabled. Quick thing to note, you'll see below that there's two diasing scale values. When working in Blender, you'll see the viewport value. And if you're wondering why your renders are taking a lot longer to compute, 
It's probably because it's slicing the layout using the new render value. This is the setting that you may need to play around with to get the right depth and render times. Now we can create the car shadow maps or cutouts for any obstructions to our layer. In our material, add in a new image texture node and create a new image. Now this can be where it becomes a little tricky to follow along, so pay attention. To avoid any weird mismatches between our texture map and UV map, like seen here, we need to add a new UV map to the same object. To do this, go to Data, UV Maps, Create New UV Map. In our first viewport, we can go into the UV Editor and we'll see our new UV map selected. We can then view our newly created car removal image texture and scale down our object's UV so there's no errors. To add in a UV map node in the Material Editor, connect it to our image texture and select our new UV map. In one of the viewports, we can go into the Texture Paint tab and begin painting. Paint away at the spots where our obstacles are. This may take some back and forth to get right. And if you're like me and have done different layers, we can mix between those using a mixed color node. Lastly, use a mixed color node again to subtract the cast shadow maps from our displacement map. And bam, that's the basic procedure for creating snow on any surface, except in this very specific example. You may also want to create some discoloration in the snow by using another mixed color node in between the diffuse input of our snow texture. Falling snow. Now there are two ways to create falling snow. The easiest way is to go online and find a random snow falling asset pack and then track it into our scene. This works great, but if you want some direct snow interaction, here's what you need to do. First, add in a plane and adjust it into position. Add in a sphere and make sure the poly count is low. This will be our snowflake. With the plane selected, add in a new particle emitter. Set the render setting to object and choose our snowflake. Next, we can change some settings. Scroll down to the field weights and turn down both the gravity and all settings. This is a bit of a cheat, but it makes the snow look like it's falling a lot slower. Find the scene models you've made. We need to make some collision objects. Firstly, up the stickiness, dampening, and friction to one. We don't want our snowballs bouncing back now, do we? We may also need to move our camera track forward so that the snow is not starting to fall. To do this, go to our camera, look in constraints, and here we will see our object constraint. Click constraint to F curve, and this will add keyframe data to our new camera. From here, we can extend our scene and move our camera keyframes forward. Add in a new material to our snowflake sphere. In the material editor, add in a layer weight node, a transparent material, mix shader, and a curves modifier. We can then mix between the two textures, our white material and our transparent material, using the layer weight node plus a curves to guide how transparent we want the edges to be. Positing. Down for some Da Vinci Resolve. Ooh la la. For all these renders, we're gonna follow the same procedure. From our base clip, we can create a new fusion clip. First, create a merge node. Make sure the base clip is in the background, aka the yellow input, and our render layer is in the foreground, aka the green input. We can also add in a divide and multiply node as this will protect our edges when we do our color grading. Add in a curves node between the two. Unclick alpha and adjust the whites and the black to match your shot. Now this is a bit of art to try and match those colors, but just do the best you can. You gotta do this for all three render layers. We'll also have to do some rotoscoping for our subject and the objects. If you're new to DaVinci, check out the video I've created on how to rotoscope. I give four ways on how to do it. Maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not. Once masked, add two merge nodes. The first will be used to cut out a mask by setting the blending mode to mask. We can now merge our fills back into the sequence of layers. From here out, it's all about fine tuning. Mix up those layers, change the colors, change the curves, add in some blur. And that's how you create a snowy scene.